Alrighty, time for a 3v3. We've got a good squad here. It's myself, Numot, and Jaybro, Cube aficionados. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, well, Numot's got a great YouTube channel and a stream. We did a little crossover. Jaybro is one of the founders of KubeCon, or working with them, I'm not sure. And, of course, frequent Cube trophy leader. Awesome dude. And then we're battling against Sam Rolf, a Cube master, Jesse Hampton, Two PT top eights, also a cube master, and Talisker, who uh, does a lot of these drafts and is a regular in the queues. Don't know them as well, though. Could be a master, could not be. We'll find out. What do we got here? Well, this pack's not the best. We've got a Scalding Tarn, which is the equivalent of first picking like a decent common. <laughs> We've got a Talarian Academy and a Frexian Metamorph and an Ignoble Horror. I don't think. I don't think I'm supposed to first pick Talarian Academy. As much as I love Talarian Academy, I think I'm just going to take Scalding Tarn here. Academy might wheel. We'll, we'll see. But it doesn't always work out. It can be the best card in your deck or one of them. But starting with Talarian Academy, like if I'd first pick Talarian Academy, I'm still probably second picking Mystic Confluence here over Remand. They're both very good, but I think Confluence is better. And I'd much rather have Scalding Tarn Mystic Confluence than Academy Mystic Confluence. Passing up on a Season Pyro, which is also a really good card. What is, what's going to be gone? Remand, Pyro, Triome, Palantir probably, and then maybe a Braid or Custodial Lich, kind of depending on what people are playing. Maybe Outcome Wheels, maybe Displacer Kitten, I don't know. I'll just take Mystic Confluence here. Mystic Confluence is fine. Five mana, does a bunch of stuff. Uh, ooh, Force of Negation versus Path to Exile versus Tundra. See, look, the Academy pick. Wouldn't have worked out quite so well. It's okay. We'll take Force and Negation. It's a really good start with Mystic Confluence. It helps, you know, kind of fight unfair decks. And even against fair decks, they have a lot of non-creature spells. And getting to go, like, play my 4-drop, force your 4-drop is a game-winning kind of sequence in a lot of cases. Tundra, Path are definitely going to be gone. I would imagine... I mean, this pack's kind of weak that maybe Force of Vigor is gone. Fiery Islet, yeah, there's not a whole lot that I, mean, I care about that's going to come back here. This pack has a Dothy Voidwalker and a Snuff Out, or like the two best cards. They're both black. There's also a Seacrum Coast, a Lilian of the Veil, a Karn Sign of Urza. <clears throat> I really like Dothy Voidwalker, but I just took two double blue cards and a Scalding Tarn. I think I'd rather have Snuff Out instead because it's a lot easier to splash. So I'm going to do that. This pack now has a Raugrin Triome, a Leovold, those are both good. There's Duress, which works nicely with the strategy I have so far. And then there's a bunch of like Draga Tree Speaker, Nissa, Utopia Spa, green cards. I'm just going to take the Duress and keep drafting blue black here. Mm, this pack has a Thespian Stage, and we saw a Vampire Hex Mage, but we haven't seen the depths yet. There's Concealing Curtains, which I've actually been pretty impressed with. One mana, 04. You pay three to transform it, and when you do, it becomes a 3-4 Menace, and kind of Vendillion clicks them. You, you look at their hand and make them discard a card, and then they draw a card. Also, you don't have to if their hand is bad. All right. Passing up a bunch of decent white cards and a Thrag Tusk. Yeah, all Curtains here. Okay. So Ignoble Hierarch Wield, which is tempting. There's also Thief of Sanity, Dark Confidant, and Luris. I think I just take Thief of Sanity. It's blue-black with Duress, Force and Negation, Snuff Out is an awesome archetype. I drafted this a bunch. You've seen me. This is where I always take a Kaito, the Dancing Shadow, and just like, you know, kind of dance around my opponents here. Passing two good green cards and a couple good white cards, but it looks like blue-black is open. I'm getting a six-pick blue-black gold card, which is a good one, is nice. This is the kind of deck that get, you get a Fallen Shinobi easily. Oh, wow. So this pack has Custody Lich. The Palantir also wield. So a Braid went. Season Pyro as expected. Remand. Let's see. I think I take Zagoth Triumph over Custody Lich. I don't know. I, I'm i just not the biggest Custody Lich fan. I think it's a good card. But I think Zagoth Triumph is is better. Just making guaranteeing a blue black land is just so important. This pack has now Noxious Gearhulk and Scarab God. And Lily the Last Hope. Also Hex Mage, but I'm not really that into Hex Mage, so the red blue land got taken, of course. What to do? I think I like Scarab God more than 
Noxious Gear Hulk, especially since I can pitch it to Force Negation. That's not that's not irrelevant. Oh, the Dothy Voidwalker wield. I was just about to say, what if Dothy Voidwalker wield? This makes me really happy. I took the Zagoth Triumph pick, and really happy. I'm in <clears throat> I'm in these colors. Also, Zagoth Triumph that can help cast Leovold. Le Leovold's great in this archetype. So, slam Leovold here, and uh, we're looking great. All right, I'll take Thrag Tusk as a potential sideboard card. Uh, do I want to hate the Courser or the Spellbinder? I don't care about passing Cabal Ritual. I think I'd rather hate the Spellbinder. I think it's quite a bit better than Courser. I'm not going to play Courser at this point. Oh, this is this is looking awesome. It, for a six-player draft, this is a fantastic start. All right, I'm going to hate draft the Elspeth. I think it's better than Leyline Binding, even though I am more likely to play Binding. All right, well, I wield a Gear Hulk. All right, so now all I need is a little bit of acceleration. Just a, just a little mox here. And, uh, ooh, no mox, but uh, Orcish Bowmasters? Fantastic. All right, we'll take Orcish Bowmasters here and pass a Recurring Nightmare, a, <laughs> a Colgon's Command, a Blood Tithe Harvester, a lot of those. Definitely Reprieve and Volcanic are going to go. Scrobland's probably going to go, too. Probably Recurring Nightmare because it's a generically powerful card. And either Devoted Druid or City of Traders, or maybe Batter Skull if someone snapped up a Stoneforge. But we're slamming a Bowmasters here. Easy pick. Uh, this pack is less, less enticing. There's a Sylvan Library that we could play. There's a Badlands that, I mean, you never know. Badlands does make Scalding Tarn get untapped black mana, which is nice. I think I still might take Arid Mace. It's awkward because it can't get Zagoth Triumph, but it's it's just the best card by so much, and it wouldn't be too hard to to activate Arid Mesa depending on where we end up. Because also we might not splash the Leovold. Maybe we'll be doing other things. I just don't think Badlands or Sylvan Library is that that important here. Let's just take Arid Mesa. Now we have the option of Spellseeker, but we don't have, without Time Walk or Ancestral, I'm not a big Spellseeker fan. Brainstorm with our two fetches, which is okay. Venser, which is good, and Kite Sail Freebooter, which is good. Or Spar's Headquarters makes Arid Mesa into a blue green land, which could be something. But I think there's a chance Kite Sail Freebooter wheels. Black has seemed super open. I actually really like Venser in these style of decks, so I think I just take Venser over Brainstorm here. And uh, we'll see where we end up. I don't know that we're going to play this Leovold or not. I don't know that we're going to play this Arid Mesa. It was just a weak pack. There was no card that I really cared too much about having. I'd rather deny the other team that. Oh, wow, this, this pack has a Breach. I hate passing Breach, but I'm going to. And I think I'm going to take Preordain over Ponder and hope to wield a Ponder. I don't know how likely that is. Um, I just like the cantrips a lot. And I think this one's the best one because Ponder ponder with a fetch land is better. This is why legacy decks tend to start with Ponders over Preordains. When you don't always have a fetch land on tap, Preordain is just a lot safer. There's also Ponder Dazed Gear Hulk, and someone's going to take the Breach. There's also a Savai Triome, but we'll take Ponder here, or Preordain rather. Just making the deck more consistent is good. Blue is probably being cut to some degree, but I don't really care. Um, this pack has Murktide Regent, which is not super exciting. The best card in the pack is Goldspan, or if you're twinning, the, the Exarch is obviously important. I might just take the Expressive Iteration. It's a good card, and I have Tarn and Mesa. So I have the start of splashing it. I mean, maybe I don't play Leovold then, or maybe I just pick up the lands and let me do all of it. I just don't think... Taking Exarch or Goldspan is just a straight hate draft. Some percentage of the time, hate drafting Goldspan Dragon doesn't do anything because they just take iteration if they're red-blue. There's also Terra Sunder, but I'm not really that interested in splashing a Terra Sunder. So iteration isn't like an exciting pick, but I think it's it's a fine one. Really what I would like to see is a Xander's Lounge, you know, or uh, even just like... Uh, the wheeling the badlands though that was kind of a weak pack this pack's been a lot less exciting than pack one but pack one was so good that i expect a pretty good pack three and it just happened that pack one had a lot of black cards open this pack hasn't had as many black cards open like if i had gotten to take like a fatal push or something like that there that would i would have been a lot happier oh there's the xander's lounge 
Oh, there's also Magma Opus to try to wield Torrential Gear Hulk, but I've got some good big cards already. I'm passing a channel the other direction, but I don't think the person passing to me is green. Uh, we've got Slacks past me. Well, Slacks always takes channel, but Slacks, look, there's a couple things. First of all, Slacks past me, Ignoble Hierarch, Corsair, Leovold, all those cards with very few cards left my pack, Thrag Tusk, less likely he's green. Second, the cards that work with channel also work with sneak attack, so cutting channel and passing sneak is less important, and the Ulamog's in the pack anyway. There's also another good green card, so I don't think I need to hate the channel. Passing a Teferi is passing a Teferi, but I think Xander's Lounge is going to help the deck a lot, because also I might just splash K-Command, because unsurprisingly the two red-black cards are there. There's just not that many black drafters. In fact, Scrubland's also here, which would make Arid Mesa into untapped black. So is it better to make Arid Mesa into untapped black? It's already tapped black, red, blue. And I might play one mountain because I in, to play the iteration. Or I don't think this is a City of Traders deck. It's just not looking like that. Or am I going to want to splash K-Command off these three sources already? K-Command's pretty good when you have Bowmasters and Leovold. All right, let's just take K-Command. Uh, Badlands didn't wheel, not shocking. I guess I just take Tireless Tracker, Rampaging Raptor, one of the combo cards. Soul Transfer is also a playable. Three mana exile a creature or planeswalker. And you could also use it as a, as a raise dead if you want. Worm Coil and Blight Steel, it's like you're passing two big artifacts. They're, they're different. You can cast Worm Coil, but uh, I'll take Soul Transfer. It, it's actually a fine sideboard card. All right, Freebooter did wheel, and I am interested, especially since if anyone opens Fallen Shinobi Pack 3, I expect it to end up in my pile. I really like the card, and it would be good in this deck. There's also the Spar's Headquarters, which would make Arid Mesa into tapped blue it already and green. Hmm. I have two Triumphs already. Let's just take the... The, the freebooter. All right, so Ponder didn't wheel. Days did, and so did Savai Trium. I, I don't hate Savai Trium, but Days is really good in your, like, freebooter, Voidwalker, Thief of Sanity deck. So let's let's do that. When you have a good low curve. Okay, do I splash Terra Sunder? Do I hate Exarch? I kind of feel like if someone wanted Exarch, they would have taken it the first time around. And given that I have the Zagoth Trium and the Leovold, there's a chance I play Terra Sunder in my deck. Now there's Pestermite and Sneak Attack and Elvish Mystic. I'm just going to hate the Sneak Attack. I think I'm more likely to want to do that. All right, now I'll take the Scrubland because I don't think... I mean, Blood Tithe Harvester is a good card. Am I going to just go heavier red? Maybe I am. Blood Tithe is actually awesome. All right, let's just take the Blood Tithe. That's fine. We wield both black red cards because that also means in pack three... Black red stuff, whether they be lands or cards, are more likely to come our direction, though I know Badlands is gone. This Arid Mesa pick worked out, though. Picking up the Xander's Lounge has, has made the Arid Mesa pick also great. Also, the fact that I'm now playing red cards in my deck... All right, well, this is the only playable, so I'm going to take it. The fact that I'm playing red cards in my deck means I can play a couple mountains to go with the, the Arid Mesa, so it's totally fine. All right, there's a Mox Emerald and a Thought Seize. We're obviously taking Mox Emerald. And it makes it a lot more likely I splash Leovold because now I have three free green sources for Leovold without doing anything other than, like, I would already have played Zagoth Trium, obviously Scalding Tarn, and Mox. So Leovold's free. Passing Thoughtseize and Jace and Grim Monolith and Thalia Stoneforge. Okay. And Bloodstained Mire. What's going to come back? I guess one of these white cards is going to come back. Thunder Malt might might also get taken. No, no chance Thoughtseize comes back. Even if I'm the only heavy black drafter, I believe I am, because Dothy Voidwalker is a premium card and it, it wield. People can switch. It's possible someone switched into black. They got a, you know, they opened a shield or something. But as of pack one, I was the only heavy black drafter. And wheeling Blood Tithe and K Command, double wheeling the Blood Tithe even, means that uh, no one was, was going that direction either. Playing like, playing basically, this is less splashable than K Command, but they weren't playing heavy black red. Uh, this pack's a lot more disappointing. Also, should I be black red? I think my blue cards are good enough to play still, especially with the, the fixing I have, but it's funny that I could be a heavier black red. So what's the best card in this pack? Probably Questing Beast, Flicker Wisp, Itali are among the... Oh, Noble are among the best cards. I guess we're just passing all the good green. 
I could take a Tali as just a castable, and I have sneak attack. If I take a Tali, sneak also with gear hook, sneaks, sneaks getting close to playable, because Itali, the, one of the reasons I like Itali and Atroxa is you can cheat them in and they're very strong. And they're also uh, reasonably castable. The, the other alternative would be to take Ledger Shredder. I hate Inquisition of Kozilek. It'll probably wheel and I don't care if it does or not. Do I just take Ledger Shredder because it's a good card in this deck? Yeah, I'll just take the Shredder. I don't know. That's, that's tough. So there's a Crater Hoof. There's a Bayou, there's a Duretti, also a Mother of Runes passing some good white. I think I just take Bayou or, oh no, Blood Crypt, huh? Okay, so what do these two do? Because I, I like Duretti, but I think Duretti is a very good chance of wheeling, given all the other black red cards did. So Bayou makes just black green. It's not fetchable by either of those. Blood Crypt makes Arid Mesa into untapped black and Scalding Torn into untapped black. Oh yeah, we're just going to take Blood Crypt here. Easy Blood Crypt. Okay, there's a Smuggler's Copter, and that's the perfect card for this deck. Pretty decent chance we get Graveyard Trespasser back. Maybe, maybe consider, but yeah, we'll take Copter. All right. Oh, Underground Sea. Yeah, that's not. we're not passing that up. We're not even miss, missing out on anything. I mean, there's Crystalline Giant, Tenacious Underdog, <laughs> Scrapwork Mutt. All right, well, the mana is looking good. And that actually means that maybe we can take this Cryptic? Because there's also Zeotor's Proving Ground, which would mean we'd have the three Trilands that, or three of the four Trilands that get our four colors, which is funny. The other one we'd be missing, I guess, would be the uh, Ketria Triumph, yeah. But I feel like our mana's great. We have two fetch lands, two Triumphs, two duels. Is that enough to play Cryptic? I think it is, because we'll have one, two, three, four, five blue sources without adding any islands. So even if we play like three islands, and we also have uh, Smuggler's Copter, the Blood Token. We have ways to discard Cryptic if it's not being good. Okay, so both white cards came back. Everything else got taken. I'm just going to take the Thunder Maw here. I just don't think, I think just passing both white cards makes a lot of sense. Mind Collapse is kind of interesting too. Zero mana kill a creature as long as you're you're battling. But I feel like this deck could actually swing double red. Okay, and Atali wield. At this point, I might want to take Rankle, though. Four mana, three, three flying, haste. When it hits them, you can make you make both players discard. Each player loses a life and draws a card, or each player sacks a creature. What's really powerful about this is I have Orcish Bowmasters and also just a bunch of little creatures so I can hit them and make us both sack a creature. And if they have one creature in play, that can be really powerful. All right. I think we're rankling. Oh, they buy you wield. Yeah. Mother runes wield. No one's drafting white. If someone wants to switch into it, they are welcome to, I guess. Graveyard trespasser wield. And I think we will play that over baleful mastery. But I think at this point, we're cutting noxious gear hulk. We also even just have slots for it. I think this is fine. And then now, I actually like Crystalline Giant more than Tenacious Underdog, and it's colorless, so it denies one to our opponent. So now, now I need to cut one. This is a pretty good blue-black aggro deck, splashing Leovold, Blood Tithe, Iteration, and Command off of ample fixing. Like, I can play zero forests here, right? I have four blues, four green sources with no cost. Plus, do I have a way to make treasure? No, I guess I don't. Most decks just have like random ways to make treasure. Uh, and in terms of red sources, I have plenty. <laughs> Sail into the West with Leovold is actually pretty cute. I don't think this deck wants a draw seven. I could double splash Escape to the Wilds. I think I'd rather just take Porcelain Legionnaire and just have another beater. You know what? Honestly, this deck could side in Sulfuric Vortex in the right matchup. Hmm. These are both kind of weak. I guess I'll just take the auger. Braids is not crazy either. All right. I mean, I, I like this deck. I think that... Uh, I think it worked out to be basically the only black drafter or heavy black drafter. Um, we'll call this Grixis aggro. It's close enough. And uh, I think that the, the deck ended up being quite good. 
Okay. Let's see. We're, we're, we're very aggressive. And we have a little disruption. I would have used like one more piece of disruption, but honestly, this is the deck for days and force of negation. Like those cards are going to really pay dividends here. Okay. Like if you look at this, uh, what do I not own? Oh, Weathered Wayfarer deck can be out. I might play the Gear Hulk, maybe not. I mean, I might side it in, it's probably most likely. It's possible I play Thunder Maw here, honestly. Let's let's see. So this is one over, because I want to play 16 land plus a Mox Emerald. And this is 15 land plus a Mox Emerald. Uh, this is That's because we picked up the Porcelain Legionnaire. Honestly, it might be Sc Scarab God. Well, let, let's look at our mana base here. I, I just want to see what our mana base would be if we were not playing Thunder Maw and see how far off it would be. You know what? I want to go Tempest Lands today. So let's see. One mountain. That leaves us one, two, three, four, five red sources for three red cards. That's not crazy. Maybe we would want a second. One, two, three, four. Let's see. Four swamps is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's plenty of black. And then four islands is one, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, eight, nine blue. Yeah, so I guess I wouldn't play Thunder Maw initially, though. I, if, if I want to play like one or two more mountains, I definitely could. And no forests, though. I'm, I'm going to put... Uh, I guess I don't even have a Tempest Forest, whatever. I'll, I'll put one of these forests in. There's a chance if I side in like Thrag Tusk and Terra Sunder, I want like one forest, even if it's not fetchable. So this is a lot of two drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven two drop creatures. Is there a possibility that I want to cut one of the two drop creatures for... Like I have three expensive big cards here. And I don't think I want to play Soul Transfer. You know, this is it wouldn't be crazy to consider Braids in this deck. 3 mana, 3-3. Three, three. At the beginning of your end step, you can sacrifice an artifact creature, enchantment land, or planeswalker. And then they either sack something that shares a type with it, or they lose two life and you draw a card. So the idea is you go like two drop, three drop, then you go like, you know, hit them, play Braids, sack a land, they lose two life and draw a card. You can also sack... The Bowmaster's token, I guess, is the only way I have of making free tokens. Uh, I don't think I want the braids. And honestly, I think just having the low curve is totally fine. Yeah, I think this is where we're at. All right, this deck looks sick. This is the most beatdown deck I've drafted in a long time, especially since these colors are typically not this aggressive. But we are really getting in there. We don't have a lot of blue cards, but our blue cards are really good. Days and Force are just amazing in this archetype. Mystic Confluence is a fantastic card, as is Venser and Cryptic. And then Leovold, Thief of Sanity, and Expressive Iteration are also great. Plus, Preordain helps fix. Let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine blue. Yeah, that's enough for Cryptic. I, and I, I don't think I'd want to cut anything else. So, all right, let, let's get in there. Alrighty, time for round one. Playing at Sam Rolf. I'm on the draw. Yeah, I'm going to keep this hand. Obviously, if I draw Mox Emerald, this hand just goes nuts. But even without that, turn two, Freebooter. Turn three, uh, Crystalline Giant, if I draw any land. Or possibly Thief, if I draw blue. Okay. Uh, that's a little annoying, because you can take my only play. But if I draw blue now, I get to play a, a Ledger Shredder. Let's hope I do that. <laughs> K Command, very nice. All right. I've kept a two lander on the draw. Let's see if I play a land on turn three. No, but I drew a Dothy Voidwalker, which is pretty good. He's on some kind of f like four color thing. Okay, I guess not the land to draw. I'm basically on triple black at this point. Let's see what I get. First strike. Mm, not ideal, but is Sam on some kind of combo deck? That's what it seems like. It's not doing anything. I guess we'll find out Damnation here or something. Oh, Hanger Back for two? That's a really weak play. <sighs> All right. First Strike and Trample. His draw is actually pretty bad. Mine's not good. If I drew any land here, I would be in a dominant position. Okay. 
Yeah, the thing is, that doesn't actually work that well because you don't get the tokens because of the, uh, the, the, the Dothy Voidwalker. Okay, so now we drew the land, so now let's just play Rankle here. Flying first strike trample. Attack to ready, attack him. And I'm going to make us each discard a card. I don't want us to draw and lose a life. And I definitely don't want us to each sack a creature. I will discard with this hand. I think I discard Ledger Shredder. Well, maybe I just discard one of the red cards. I don't discard Preordain or Thief of Sanity. I think actually I discard Iteration. I don't know what's going on over there, but I have him pretty close to dead next turn. Oh, geez. Well, the thing is he could almost cast that. So he goes to one here. Okay. What do we reveal? Damn. Well, if I find a red source, he's, he's going to have Mana Drain in hand. Here, let me just show my teammates. Well, I'll show them after the game, but... Uh, this was looking good. I mean, his, his draw was also pretty anemic. Also, he's one man away from just casting a Troxa. <laughs> I guess he just never drew a discard outlet. And I gave him one. But uh, I don't think, given the mana he had out, it really made sense not to make him discard. He had three cards in hand. And I had a bunch of useless cards. I thought it was more likely, given what I've seen, that he was like some kind of storm-style duck. No dog. The dog wants in. She's not getting in. So he's going to take Sensei's top and animate dead and Liliana and Elish Norn. And I guess you get... Thought Seize versus Life Death, and then either Baleful Mastery, Manager, or Dismember. This has First Strike, Flying, and Trample. Death Touch would be really nice on this. I guess he gets to go Liliana, Make Me Sack a Creature. Keep up Mana Drain. Hmm. Yeah, I'm probably going to lose this. It's funny that choosing Lose a Life and Draw a Card also would have worked there. <laughs> because he couldn't have reanimated, but uh, again, what can you do? So what is my best draw here? I mean, I guess it depends a little. He's going to have to take Mana Drain. First of all, he knows about the K command. He can't cast Thought Seize. Like, the two sorceries don't do much yet. Obviously, once Atroxa hits, that's a different ballgame. I guess he can get, maybe instead of playing Liliana, maybe he goes Animate Dead on the, the Kite Sail Freebooter. I don't have a lot of outs in this situation. Graveyard Trespasser could deal a damage, but again, this Mana Drain is gonna counter the first spell I play. This hitting Death Touch would be pretty good. All right, so you got Sensei's top, Liliana, Life Death, Mana Drain, Anime Dead, Elish Norn Island, sure. That all makes sense. What are we gonna, what are we gonna do here? Okay, Liliana, Sacking Rankle, cause this getting, uh, this has first strike, so this getting death touch would be a pretty big game. All right, plays the top, has mana drain up. I was hoping to draw red so I could go ledger shredder into K command, but I think I just cast preordain here. That's gonna okay. Bowmasters is nice. Bottom, put on top. It's good to be getting a combat, and let's hope this gets death touch. Menace! <laughs> oh, Crystalline Giant. Crystalline Giant. <laughs> oh, look at that thing. Yep, you live by the Crystalline Giant, you die by the Crystalline Giant. In this case, we live by it. <laughs> oh, that was that was nice. All right, let's uh, let's. Sure, these are some important important data for the teammates, but um, all right, we are up a game here. Well, the the dog in because she's the dog really loses it if there's any locked doors. It's not even that she cares about where she is; she just doesn't like there to be closed doors. All right, so against a reanimator style deck, do I want Soul Transfer, Scarab God, Noxious Gear Hulk, Terra Sunder? Um. What do I not want here? I definitely like Days. 
I could I could take or leave Porcelain Legionnaire. I think Leovold's still good. Definitely Graveyard Trespasser, like Force Negation. Snuff Out looks kind of bad given what I saw, actually. I think I'd rather have Soul Transfer. And do I want a big haster? Right now I have one, two, three, four, five red sources. I'd want to put in like two more. Yeah, I don't think the I don't think there's a reason to to go 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 quite so deep. I'm just thinking of this Terra Sunder. It does hit Animate Dead to begin with and gets Atroxa. So maybe we do that. We still have five green sources. One, two, three, no, four, because Arid Mesa does not get green. Four green sources. And the dog's gone. See? It's unreal. I love the dog, but she is unreal. I already ha have the soul transfer. I have a lot of disruption. All right. Maybe I cut Porcelain Legionnaire for it. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll try that. We'll see how this works. Okay, on the draw here. All right. Well, once again, keepable. <laughs> the Porcelain Legionnaire is looking a little better than Terra Sunder in this draw, unless I draw a Mox Emerald. <laughs> Mox Emerald would be great. Blue Source would be great. Oh, Mox Emerald. All right. We like that. Everyone like that. Fiery Islet, Putrid Imp. Okay. So I take the Recurring Nightmare and leave you with Putrid Imp, Scrapwork, Mutt. Okay. Uh, swamp, Mutt, Discarding Mana Confluence. Okay, didn't draw a big thing. All right. Well, I didn't draw... A blue source, but playing this little life linker, sure. I've got a K command on deck here if I need it. Just cracking that, playing Putrid Imp. And okay, so that's going to get a tapped blue. So what I do here is I go destroy target artifact, two damage to any target. Kill those two, I think. <clears throat> I know it lets him flash back the putrid or the, the scrap work mutt, but I think that's okay. Flying lifelink. Because he could already discard whatever he wanted and getting it out of the way, plus making the, the future recurring nightmare uh, abilities worse is, is good. Okay, there goes a Troxa. At least it's not getting a reanimated this turn. Okay, let's get Xander's lounge. Is it 15? Hmm, let's see what I get here. Flying lifelink trample. So this is an interesting scenario. Got Terra Sunder, Thief. I think I just play Leovold here and play Zagoth Triumph. Look, if he plays exactly Animate Dead, Terra Sunder could have stopped it, and now he's playing Animate Dead. But I think with him at 11, there's so many ways I don't win if I just wait. But I think I'd rather just play the, the Leo here. Oh, it's death. Okay, so I couldn't have stopped it anyway. So I'm glad I played Leobold. Okay, revealing. Managing Thoughtseize. Palantir. So what's he going to get? Uh, Liliana again. Managing again, most likely. Hasn't played a land yet, so you could get oh, the Fire Islands from earlier. So we might not have a blue source to have drain up right now. Uh, the thing is, if he doesn't mana drain, he's going to Inquisition probably. Let's see. Oh, he's just going to leave up mana drain. So let me just, just, just to see. So he chooses Liliana the Veil, Hangerback Walker, mana drain, Thoughtsea Swamp. So no Inquisition, no Baleful Mastery, no Palantir, no Echo Vions, no Savai Trium. Okay, so those are the cards we know about. It's at four life. Okay, I need to draw something here. Or the Atrox is going to come get me. Bayou is not it. Um, let's see, let's go to combat. What do we get? Hexproof. That doesn't do much for me. Pass. So Hanger Back Walker, Managing the Leon of the Veil. Vale. Do I want to play Thief of Sanity is the question and keep Terra Sunder in hand. 
I'm gonna get hit by a Troxa. I guess I play Thief here. And he, yeah, unsurprisingly doesn't mana drain it. Because it's not gonna win me the game. He plays the Swamp. Yeah, hits, I'm at 14. Hanger back walker for one, okay. Pass the turn. Blood tithe harvester. Pass. Death touch? That is menace. All right, I guess in that case I might as well attack. Just flying in menace. Pass. All right, well, Atrox is hitting me, but this isn't actually game over. I mean, it's not looking great, but I'm going to get Thought Seized. The thing is, oh, he's reanimating Elish Norn. Oh, I don't like that. Uh, all right. So I guess what I need to do is probably die. <laughs> I think I do. I think end of turn, I'm going to tear asunder. I mean, I guess I could have done it during attacks. That would have been slightly better, whatever. I'm gonna Terra Sunder, it's gonna get mana drained, I would imagine. Though I guess I should have Terra Sunder before damage to force him to mana drain it, but whatever, he mana drains it, I draw. And I guess I'll discard this to draw. Okay, going to game three here. Hmm. Is Snuff Out a little better given that he's got Elish Norn? I still think Terra Sunder is probably better. Also, it hits Hangerback Exiles for two. How crazy would Sulfuric Vortex Thunder Maw be, actually? What if I sided in two mountains, took out the Terra Sunder, put in those two, took out a Swamp, took out an Island? I think the Leo is still probably worth playing. I like all those. Maybe I wouldn't play Ledger Shredder. The thing is, he has, he has Reanimate and Life Death, and with Atroxa, it feels like Vortex could actually stop that play pretty nicely. Yeah, take out Shredder. It leaves me with one, two, three, four, five, two drops still, and Concealing Curtains. All right. I like the more aggressive line here. Let's see if we can convert. There's the Mox. Ooh. Okay, I, I like this hand. I don't have double red yet, but I like that I have those cards in my deck, and I'm gonna play the Mox, because if I get a Inquisitioned, I would much rather not lose the Mox. So I guess he would just take Graveyard Trespasser at that point. Oh, he's gonna, oh, this is gonna be a beating. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that is so sick. <laughs> uh, now he gets to take my Leovold, I guess. And it doesn't flip the Graveyard Trespasser, but uh, yeah, that was... I just got a time look on the house here. Turn one, discard Itali. Into, into turn two, Graveyard Trespasser. Oh, that's, that's brutal. That is brutal. Now this is tough because obviously you want to take Leovold, but if you don't take Duress, it feels like his plan maybe falls apart if I get to Duress him. Okay, oh, he took the Duress, interesting. Huh, so. I'm gonna play the Mountain. I'm gonna attack. to 16. Do I play Leo? What I'm worried about is exactly Putrid Imp, Reanimate, Swamp, and another fatty. The problem is Venser doesn't really stop that because it just delays it by one turn. I'm going to play Leo. Go for it, I guess. If he has all those cards in concert, then, you know, there it is. All right, he doesn't, and then the Graveyard Trespasser flips, and that's basically game. 
I don't get to cast that, unfortunately, but um, just hit for seven, put you to nine. Oh, dismember. Oh, interesting. You're dismembering now. Oh, because he didn't want me to attack and make you discard. Dismember the Leovold. Draw. Okay. Put you to eight. Just going to say land go, I guess. I don't really think tapping out a Venser here really makes sense. Frantic search. So if I frantic search, if I bounce it with Venser, I get to attack you down to, to one. Yeah, I kind of like that, I think. Because this prevents uh, the glutton from flipping. And then now if I, there's a lot of things I can draw that'll, that'll finish the game off. Let's start with a uh, preordain. Okay, um, top, top, let's cast Iteration, putting Thunder Maul in hand. Uh, put, do I want to put Concealing Curtains on the bottom? Or Island, I'm not going to play the Island this turn. I'm going to play Xander's Lounge so I can have double red for Thunder Maw. The question is, do I would I rather have a Concealing Curtain in play than a Copter? I actually think I'd rather have a Concealing Curtains in play. Play Curtains, play Xander's Lounge. Attack, and then Glutton the Leovold. Okay, this puts you to one, and I have a Thunder Maw coming in hand. Yeah. I think that's better than opening the door, yeah, to any frantic search shenanigans. All right, Whew. close match, but uh, the turn two trespasser there was just chef's kiss. All righty, time for round two, playing against Jesse Slacks, who's playing a red-blue Kiki deck. Oh, this hand is sick. What do we do with this hand? I think we play turn one Porcelain Legionnaire. Turn two, either have Bowmasters, Concealing Curtains, Duress. This just puts the most power on the board on turn one, which I think is going to be important. And so he's got Magma Opus, uh, he's got Gold Fan Dragon, Corpse Dance, who hard evidence. <laughs> it's not a bad one. All right, play this. Let's see, I'm going to attack. I think I duress here, or do I just play Concealing Curtains? I don't really need to Bowmaster here. Let's just go Curtains. I kind of want to set up Curtains with Bowmaster in play, but if I just pass with Bowmaster up and he goes land go and doesn't crack the clue, then I kind of lost opportunity. Also, like, the Bowmaster and the token only attack for one damage past the Crab token, so doesn't really do much. Yeah, so now he's going to wait here. Oh, he's going to chart a course. Funny. I guess leaving Bowmaster up would have worked out pretty nicely. He's going to get Badlands or Scrubland probably for Volcanic. All right. Well, this is fine. If I draw a land... Oh, a Daze. Hmm. I think Daze makes me want to just attack for six here. This puts the most damage on the board. Chill out. Jesus Christ. Um... Desperate Ritual, Magma Opus, Recruiter. I kind of think I just take the, well, the Rampaging Raptor I can just daze. I think I just take Recruiter of the Guard, actually. Because that's going to be his natural play next turn. And then now I get to send for six here and uh, puts him to 10. I have Daze, Duress, Bowmasters. Very fast start. Caracas does make me want to reconsider Leovold, but I think Leovold's still probably pretty good. Okay. Let's draw. 
I'm gonna pay to life with blood crypt. Let's start with a duress here. Cruel ultimatum. <laughs> All right. I think I just take the desperate ritual, or do I just take the magma opus? What's he going to do? It's going to play Pestermite this turn almost assuredly. I think I take Desperate Ritual here. I think I cast Preordain. Mm -hmm. Crystalline Giant Island. I don't really want either of those. Oh, Venter, I don't mind. All right, I don't have the second blue, I guess, but that's okay. I just feel like at this point, he's going to pester my, one of my attackers, which leaves me with the perfect curve of bow masters, your pester might. And then attack with a porcelain legionnaire. So pester might's gone. Rogue and Triumph's still there. And then he plays Rampaging Raptor, and I daze it. Just, just the one, two, three punch. Just the, the perfect little curve here. Mm -hmm. um, Rankle I can definitely cut. Rankle just gets owned by Caracas. At least Leovold draws me a card when he Caracas is it. Rankle costs four mana and just gets dunked on. So let's not do that. Gearhulk's okay because it kills. He's got Goldspan Dragon and Rampaging Raptor. If I had white fixing, actually, Elite Spellbinder would be worth it. I have Arid Mesa, but I don't think that's enough to splash it. Terra Sunder also not looking like... Well, the one thing that I like about Terra Sunder, actually, is he's got Pestermite Kiki. Having an instant speed way to break that up is nice. The snuff out's just the nuts in this matchup. Gearhulk versus Soul Transfer. I guess I kind of like Gearhulk better. It interacts so much better against Goldspan Dragon. So I think I'd rather just do that. And I don't think I want Thrag Tusk... Doesn't seem like that kind of matchup. I'm on the draw here, but that was an awesome hand. I mean, turn one Legionnaire, turn two Curtains, getting to see their hand, you know, and, and like kind of plan out when I was going to daze. I didn't even really need the Duress. Taking out the Magma Opus counter didn't really do much. Oh, this hand is nice. The only thing this hand is missing is like another blue card because I want to cast both of these. But having Snuff Out and Force of Negation alongside two value generating creatures, really good. Blood Tithe, not a fantastic draw. On the other hand, though, if I draw a red this turn, I'll just play Blood Tithe instead of Ledger Shredder. Well, I'm still going to play the Shredder, even though I've got Force of Negation in hand. I don't really think I can do otherwise. Discarding Magma Opus, yep. Pass. So the question now is, if I miss on blue, what do I do? Because... Thief of Sanity is certainly the, the higher value uh, play. But if I don't have a blue card to pitch, let's see. I could play Crystalline Giant instead. I think, I think given that Snuff Out's gonna be a good disruption spell, let's just cast let's just cast the Thief and basically force him to have. He's got Incinerate in his deck. Alright, I'm gonna go Thief. I can text both. Uh, hit and pass. I don't know. Maybe that's a little greedy. But I think it's okay. Part of it, too, is like if he goes Kiki Jiki here to copy a recruiter, which is a natural curve, I'll be so much more happy that I played this Thief of Sanity. And it at least will th maybe throw off his curve. If I didn't have Snuff Out, I would have felt a lot more strongly I needed to have up the Force of Negation. Uh, but uh, that's a little annoying. All right. So that does kind of make the Thief less good. If I draw a land here, I wouldn't mind maybe casting two spells. Now it had to be a red land. That was the problem. Now the question is, do I attack with the Thief? No. Think do I play this swamp is actually kind of interesting. I have the days, so I don't have to worry about that. The reason I wouldn't is if I draw a red source and I play these two, having a land to discard sounds actually fine. So let's just do this. See what ability we gain here. Hexproof. Nice. That's almost always the one you want right away. 
Attack for one. I don't think it's worth attacking with Thief of Sanity and trading for two tokens. He's got Kiki Jiki and Unknowns in hand. Mm -hmm. So if he plays Kiki here, now that he's got protection with the spirits, I have another question. If he targets Recruiter, I could snuff out the Recruiter. The problem with that is then he has a Kiki Jiki in play. I think I'd rather let him Recruiter. And basically, I think I'd rather have Jesse have a Recruiter of the Guard in play and a creature in hand instead of a, a Kiki Jiki in play. Because I think Kiki Jiki is higher value. All right, well, unfortunately, the Thief of Sanity play didn't really work out because now he just got to play in flashback Lingering Souls. But we'll see what... Uh, We'll see what we get here. Oh, Orcish Bowmasters is pretty interesting. So let's go Freebooter. Now we're probably going to discard the Blood Tithe Harvester. Let's see what you got. Deceiver XR card evidence. Dark Ritual Kiki Jiki. Um, okay. I think I care more about hard evidence than Desperate Ritual. Yeah, you can't cruel. All right. Let's see what I get. First strike? Oh, plus one, plus one. All right. I'm just going to attack with these then. I have Bowmasters plus Snuff Out, so I have a lot of action here. Let's see. So he double blocks, triple blocks. Sure. Quad blocks. Sure. Mm-hmm. And then pass. And he goes end of turn, Pestermite. Or Exarch, rather. Tap a land. He's going to tap Zagoth Triumph. I'm going to play Bowmasters, trigger the Ledger Shredder. Oh, blue card. That's exactly what I wanted. Bowmasters resolves. I'm going to kill Recruiter of the Guard. Pass the turn. And his hand is now Desperate Ritual Kiki Jiki. He's going to play Kiki Jiki. He's going to target Deceiver X Arc. I'm going to snuff out Kiki Jiki. Oh, I guess I actually should have. Technically, I should have uh, let him target with the X Arc there. But we kind of had it all. <laughs> I told you snuff out was just going to be absurd in this in this matchup. So now he gets to untap a land, I guess. I jumped the gun a little, but I even have Force of Negation up, so... Seems like we're in pretty good shape. Desperate Ritual, okay. Discard Porcelain Legionnaire. Into Fable, all right. Oh, Force of Negation, the Fable. Yeah, this is what's called having it all. And the x -Art goes away. Sure. Block with my freebooter. Draw. Uh, just keep that in hand. Let's see what do you get. Menace. Okay, so definitely attacking with that, attacking with that. Don't want to attack with the freebooter. So let's just attack like this. Can't chump the crystalline giant, which is nice. You could chump the ledger shredder. Because I hope he doesn't have Splinter Twin here. Pass. Can't have that many cards that really get him out of this situation, I wouldn't imagine. And he doesn't. Oof, 2 0 with a little snuff out force of negation action. I didn't did even let him untap the land with Kiki, but as it turned out, I had so many good cards in this matchup. So now it's on to round three. All right, I'm 2 0. J Bro's 1 0. Kenji's 1 0. We're going for the clean sweep. Playing against Talisker, who's playing a blue green opposition deck. All right, well, I'm going to keep this. I would love to find a Bowmasters. Or just any creature, because here I've got turn one preordain, turn two smuggler's copter on the play, and looking for a way to activate it. Of course, Bowmaster would be by far the best, especially against mana elves, but we'll take what we can get. Talisker Mulligan to five. Uh, concealing Curtains and Thief of Sanity. I think I'm just going to put the thief on top and I don't need the curtains because the way I see it is curtains is kind of like a four mana spell 
And I have a, a four and a five mana spell already, so I'd rather go Copter into Thief of Sanity and then next turn Venser into Confluence. And Concealing Curtains just delays me from finding a uh, blue mana. He has Force of Vigor in his deck, though I think it might have been a sideboard card because Newmont has a, a blue eyed artifacts deck. I guess we'll find out. I still think I play Thief over Trespasser here. Crew this, and probably discarding Leovold unless I discard a green or draw a green source right now. Yeah, let's just discard Leo. It it's the least castable of all my cards. Also drawing snuff out probably locks this game up. This is what we call a little speed run. Ooh, mold of five, playing a Chrome Mox and getting uh, snuffed right on out is going to be tough. Oh, I did take four at least. All right, now I just get to a main phase. Trespasser, kill that. Crew. And if I ever find a blue, then obviously the game's over. But the game also might be over if I don't. I mean, this is just a total bloodbath. I'll discard Cryptic because it's not doing anything for me. Ha, there's my blue. <laughs> now I get to go Noble Hierarch here. And then I have the man up. Well, this is just the perfect draw. <laughs> All right, on to game two. No, no, we're gonna play. We're gonna play a turn. Ooh, making a thief of sanity, maybe. Oh, trespasser eating Leovold. Sure. Draw. Um, let's just crew this with the trespasser. Attack in the air for five here. I'll discard rankle. Sure, you go to seven. Uh, exile Endurance, because it's got Flash. Because now I have double Counterspell up. I actually have every single Counterspell possible. Confluence, Venser, Force of Negation, and then even an Endurance. <laughs> this, has been a, this has been an efficient draft. My, my, I mean, this blue-black aggro deck has really worked out like a charm. Just straight up, boom. All right. Up a game. Definitely want Noxious Gear Hulk. Maybe want Scarab God. Duress. He's got Sylvan Library. He's got Invasion of Ikoria. He's got Opposition. Maybe Force of Vigor, but I don't even care about that. I think I take out Porcelain Legionnaire too. I don't really like that card against Green Decks all that much. And Soul Transfer also seems okay. Like Leo, Bowmasters is still good. Force of Negation, I think I like a little more because this stops a top decked opposition and whatnot. I think that's a little bit more important. But maybe I just don't play Scarab God. Maybe the Gear Hulk is better. Just something that happens right away. Because I think Rankle's still good. Leovold. I could cut Crystalline Giant. Just make my curve a little higher. Yeah, okay. I, I kind of like that. I still have a lot of low drops. And uh, I mean... The Scarab God against someone who's not really likely to remove it is good, and it can even battle opposition. Oh, look at this draw. <laughs> this draws a swamp away from just straight up perfection. Oh, man. If only I was on the play, I could have bowmastered it. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to, but if he's got another elf, that'll help. I'm not going to daze whatever this is. Oh, no, I actually am going to daze whatever this is. I can't, uh, I can't let channel happen. I'm not into that. Oh, Mox Emerald. Okay, well, the Mox actually is really nice because I can play a Leovold on turn two now, or, well, I guess turn three. Kind of turn two. Deep Forest Hermit. Well, that one... I think we're going to start with Leo because it still blocks a Squirrel. And I'm hoping that I can leave up mana next turn. I mean, I'm not going to be able to play two spells next turn because my only two cheap spells all cost tons of black. But this already makes the attack a little less appealing. Metamorph my Leo. Oh, no, Hermit, of course. Okay, so I take 12 this turn. Yeah, would have worked out a little better to leave up Bowmasters. Ooh, Ledger Shredder's nice. So let's go Ledger Shredder. Am I just dead though? Hold on. Wow, 
there my draw was sick but his draw is even better because now if i kill that yeah i just sort of straight up die all right Whew. well that was i needed to draw a snuff out earlier or something so if i had played bowmaster or left mana up for bowmaster that would have worked out a lot better but what can you do um i'm gonna keep this hand it's it's a little bit awkward, but it's got some good stuff going for it. One, I can I have snuff out because I'm gonna go get Xander's Lounge. Two, if I draw a black source, then I get to play uh, Dothy Voidwalker soon here, and I get to play Smuggler's Copter no matter what. All right, land. Let's go Copter and go. I want to kind of slow roll the mocks if I can because of uh, Force of Vigor. Oh wow. This is a channel hand for sure. Okay, well, I can't do anything about that, but I can play Voidwalker, crew this, and hope to find Force of Negation. Uh, Mystic Confluence, let's discard, well, I actually don't want to discard Soul Transfer. I think I discard Scarab God, because I already have a different five mana play that's good, and I'm worried that if, if Talisker plays Ulamog here off channel, <laughs> can't stop that unfortunately, then Soul Transfer, because it exiles, can actually kill an Eldrazi. All right, channel away. If it's Emrakul, then yeah, I lose. I, can't, I think I can beat Ulamog, because there's no way you can go after Xander's Lounge here with six unblockable. You just have to kill the two creatures probably. Yeah, all right. I can actually win this game still. Obviously, obviously that uh, makes it a little harder, but it's not the game's not over. Now I wish I had that stupid Scarab God back, but that's okay. I've got Snuff Out for the first play, Mystic Confluence up for the next one. Mm, let's just draw. Yeah, let's Snuff that out. Then play Leo. Leo is a great draw because that's a threat that uh, is pretty Brazilian. And let's hope this isn't a questing beast. Oh, Green Suns for three. I really don't want to give up Mystic Confluence here. Hold on, I got to ask my teammate. Let's see. Because I really don't want to force this, but what? what, what Eternal Witness, I wouldn't want to force it. Tireless Tracker, I have the Tireless Tracker, right? Augur, Courser of Crufix, I guess it would be. Okay, yeah, all right. Go nuts, I guess. I think it's gonna be Courser of Crufix. But it's already played a land. I just don't want to give up Mystic Confluence. Yeah, because now, now that's okay. Oh, didn't draw. So it has Thrun on top, which is unfortunate. But I'm going to get to counter this and draw two cards. Counter target, no, sorry. Counter target spell, draw two cards. Okay, so now, the problem is Thrun is actually pretty annoying. Now I wish I really hadn't discarded Scarab God, but I think at the time it made sense. All right, draw. Well, if I draw three land in a row, I draw three land in a row, four land in a row. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I'm gonna lose now. Wow. Drawing Force of Negation a turn later and then Drawing four land in a row is not the sequence I was hoping for. <laughs> I couldn't even daze that anyway. Uh, I guess if I draw Noxious Gear Hulk, I can still win this game. I guess I'll get to daze the Deep Forest Hermit. So I need to, it's just like Noxious Gear Hulk or Bust here. Okay. Best I can do is another land. Well, we're going to have to settle with a 2 1, but. That felt 
pretty brutal to, to lose that. That felt pretty unlucky. So it goes. All right, we'll see how the rest of the team does. All right, this is game three of Newmont the Nummy versus Jesse Slacks. Uh, Newmont's deck is sick. He's Urza Saga for Soul Ring. And currently Newmont's 1-0, J-Bro's 1-1, I'm 2-1. Oh, I should have felt like I should have been 3-0, but that means we're up 4-2. So one more match and we win. And this one's looking pretty good. Slacks has a bunch of little chump blockers, but these uh, constructs are really coming for, for him here. Chumps one goes to eight. And Kenji's passing with five cards in hand, which I think is pretty good. Okay, he discards Magma Opus, has a Desperate Ritual in hand and a Kiki Jiki in hand. So definitely some combo potential here, but Kenji's deck, we can take a quick look at that actually. Kenji's deck has Reprieve, Remand, Path, Swords, uh, Torrential Gear Hulk, March of Otherworldly Light, Hullbreaker Horror, a lot of instants. So hopefully Kenji's got a couple instants in hand. He's got all his threats on the board here. Slacks has access to five, six, seven mana with the Desperate Ritual and the Treasure, because remember, one's a treasure, one's a clue. If we win this, we win the draft. I feel like this looks pretty good. He's got the potential to, to go like Pestermite, Untap the City of Traders, Ritual Kiki. Like that's easy, right? You know, or Exarch. He's got both Pestermite and Exarch. But I just named a million cards Kenji could have. Okay, so he's not doing that. He's not untapping City of Traders this turn, obviously. Also, Kenji didn't play a land last turn. So he has five spells in hand. And he's got six different instants that do something here. Well... I guess Path, Swords, Remand, Reprieve are the four instants. Oh, March, so five instants. And then he's also got Gear Hook, but I guess that doesn't do anything in this current situation. There's just no, no spells in the graveyard. One counter isn't enough to win the game. Oh, Mizzix Mastery. Okay, so if you have Reprieve or Remand, you just let the Mastery resolve, let him put Magma Opus on the stack, the copy of it, and then remand or reprieve it. I would be pretty surprised if Kenji didn't have one of those cards in hand because he knows Jesse has these two cards in hand. So let's see. What's he got? Oh, he's tapping both for mana. So he doesn't have it? Wow. Okay. And then he plays a Lingering Souls. Interesting. So did Kenji really just not have it and he's just going to untap Basalt Monolith now? It's kind of hard to, to really construct what hand he could have that doesn't have a single interactive spell. No, that's not true. He just doesn't have Reprieve or Remand. He could easily have Swords or Path to Exile or March of Otherworldly Light, which, as good as Magma Opus was, it did just draw two cards. It, it, was, a, it was a Mold Drifter. And it also cost Jesse the City of Traders, so it was basically, and you had to discard Magma Opus, though I guess you got, and you used the treasure, so it was Magma Opus, City of Traders, Mizzix Mastery in exchange for a 4-4 and 2 cards. That is not the end of the world. Kenji also has Upheaval in his deck, though this might be Holebreaker Horror. If he has Holebreaker Horror and any spell to trigger it, Mox Opal and Soul Warring can loop for infinite mana and infinite storm depending on uh, what that does for you. Ooh, okay. Holebreaker Horror. Oh, he's got it. If he's pathing that thing, he, he he's definitely got it. Also, this might be close to lethal if he's got a couple more spells to, to bounce all those, but I think mostly he's just gonna, he's just gonna do this, and maybe he could set up like a gigantic upheaval or something like that. There's a lot he could do in this situation. Oh, this is cool. I'm glad we tuned in for this. All right, four mana. Oh, we're getting some white mana. Sure. I mean, you could also get mana of any color thanks to Mox Opal. So it's probably not upheaval given the fact that he uh, played a land already, but it also kind of doesn't matter if he, if he plays a land because for upheaval, he gets to make infinite mana and then replay all the artifacts in Holebreaker and have infinite mana on tap. Okay, let's see. 
focus. They're just seeing what's going to happen. Sometimes in these drafts, because, uh, you know, we're, we're all friends here. If you've got a loop going, it's like, hey, do you have this in hand? And it's like, yeah. You know, you just show them or whatever. The, re the way you show it is like, let's say you had a walking ballista. You just play a ballista for zero and it's like, you know, they concede to it or whatever. Okay, let's see what Kenji ends up happening here with this hole breaker. Snapcaster mage, okay. Bounce that, path bounce, nice, nice. Path the crab, bounce the spirit, uh, attack for 10 with the constructs. Yeah, that is sick. That is sick. And that's a dub. That would make us a total of five and two. This deck was probably out like a dream. Honestly, just the combination of duress, curtains, days, and, and all that uh, really worked out nicely. So I think that uh, this deck is really just exactly where you want to be in terms of a, a non-red, non-white aggro deck, which doesn't come up all that often, honestly. You you end up you end up not being able to assemble this, but three power creature, three power creature, three power creature. So like four three power creatures for two mana, bowmasters, shredder, disruption, force. Yeah, it was great. All right, we got, we racked up another dub here. Thanks for watching. Two one, almost a three zero. Really good good games, and. Uh, We'll be back tomorrow with some awesome stuff. I got some cool stuff coming up. Keep an eye out for these uh, stipulation drafts. Uh, that you'll, you'll see more tomorrow. Talk to you later. Bye.